So really what we have here is a typical uh, lung cancer patient, metastatic disease, no driver mutations, treated with chemotherapy, uh, failing chemotherapy, getting second line chemotherapy with docetaxel and now a, a ramucirumab, a VEGF inhibitor. Uh, and, and then of course, uh, the next step probably would be you know, an, an immunotherapy. One could have made the case to have given immunotherapy beforehand. However, now in 2018, where we are right now, a patient like this would get immunotherapy up front. Based on the data from the Keynote 189 trial, if I were seeing this patient in my clinic today, uh, I would give this patient uh, chemotherapy uh, with uh, pembrolizumab. Uh, because in that trial, even though the, uh, the progression-free survival data were not extremely compelling in the PDL10 patients, there was a survival benefit for the immunotherapy chemo combination versus chemotherapy alone. And it's my opinion that immunotherapy should be given to all patients who qualify because immunotherapy will have the opportunity to produce uh, uh, a more durable and, and lasting uh, survival in patients. It's not all of them, it's a small percentage, 10, 15 percent, but I try to give immunotherapy whenever possible as early as possible. So th this case is very interesting because it's right on the cusp of how the fields evolved just in the last month uh, since the AACR meeting and the presentation of the Keynote 189. Uh, even though uh, one could have used chemotherapy, uh, carboplatinum, uh, pemetrexid, pembrolizumab in the setting. Few were doing it because of the data being all based on a phase two trial of 120 plus patients. But now with the 600 plus patient Keynote 189, I think most would probably use chemotherapy, uh, immunotherapy in a patient like this. Um, but, um, but again, the, the, it shows how the field's evolving and how new data are constantly uh, reaching us in the clinic. Uh, through programs like this, for example, and people are now uh, evolving in how they treat these patients.